You've heard a lot about the concerns that uh, many people have about be being sure that we build a quality teaching force for all our kids in this country. Uh, one of the things that you've heard is an effort to, in part, to challenge the myths that uh, circulate nationally, but especially inside the Beltway. The myths that teacher qualifications don't matter. You hear that a lot, that investments in professional learning don't work and are not needed. We especially hear that as cuts are going down at the moment. Uh, that equal outcomes can be achieved by testing without investing, that all we need is more accountability and testing, and that will be, do the job. And there's a theory of action that we can improve student achievement by eliminating expectations and support for teacher training, reducing standards for entry, and then firing those who later fail to improve student achievement. Uh, and I think the argument that you've heard from everyone speaking here is that uh, these, uh, these myths uh, are, not, uh, are not accurate and won't get us where we need to go. Beth earlier showed a slide which talked about how teacher qualifications can make a difference, and it presented a uh, study from North Carolina, which was reinforced by another study in New York City recently, which showed that students achieve uh, at higher levels and gain more achievement when their teachers have strong academic preparation, a strong academic background, uh, are fully prepared when they enter, are certified in the field in which they teach, have three years of experience or more, and are national board certified. Uh, that's the North Carolina study. The New York study looked at all of those things except board certification and found the same results. When you combine teachers who have all of those attributes versus students who have teachers with few of those attributes, the effects are enormous. In fact, greater than the effects of race and parent education combined. So it's a very large effect. Uh, qualifications do matter. Now, it is also true that within any given uh, uh, group of teachers, you're going to have a range of effectiveness. And we're concerned both about being sure people have the foundation and that they are effective uh, within the roles that they take on. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've uh, also heard a little bit about is the concern about whether Federal policy is encouraging and investing in people to get adequate preparation uh, for the jobs they take on. Uh, often in, you know, in uh, Washington, we all hear, and I've certainly heard it, uh, that there's no difference between pathways into teaching. Well, there's a study that Mathematica did a little while ago, and they compared teachers from alternative certification routes and traditional routes those with low coursework and those with high coursework. And this is just a chart that displays a little bit of those findings. Uh, teachers from, on the far left, low coursework alternative certification routes uh, actually had a reduction in the achievement of their students between the fall and the spring. In reading and math, the kids actually lost uh, progress between fall and spring. Those who came from high uh, coursework alternative certification routes the third set of bars over, did much better. So uh, you know, alternative certification routes vary, and we've all said there is a, a big range. Those who came through traditional routes did a little better still. But the message of this is that what teachers get access to in terms of their knowledge counts. And if we were in a high-achieving country, which we are not at the moment, uh, if we were in a country that was making investments, uh, we would be ensuring that every teacher has access to the knowledge and the skills that they need to do the job that they want to do on behalf of students. There's another effect that happens when you get in concentrations of teachers without uh, sufficient training in one place. And this chart comes from a study in Oakland, California, where I was just the other evening, uh, where they'd done some reforms and they'd done some new schools, they redesigned schools, and they increased student achievement, the productivity of schools, uh, when they used the new school design models, that little blue bar on the left. But in the schools that had a large proportion of first and second year teachers, the negative effects of a concentration of beginning teachers were so large that it wiped out the positive effects of the reforms they've been trying to undertake because you can't actually get traction on reforms if you have a revolving door of beginning teachers without adequate support. So we're concerned about these issues both for individuals and for schools as a whole. Qualifications are a minimum. They're not a maximum. We need to leverage effectiveness by validly assessing and developing teachers' abilities to teach diverse learners well. 
Uh, that can take place through teacher performance assessments for new teachers that evaluate, as some states are doing and a coalition of states are beginning to launch, how they can plan for English learners and special education students, as well as regular education students, implement instruction, be videotaped doing that, collect evidence of student learning, uh, and have that evaluated uh, before they enter the profession. We know that those assessments predict teachers' later effectiveness in raising student achievement gains. We can have multifaceted evaluations of veteran teachers uh, that include evidence of their practice and their contributions to student learning and to the school as a whole. Uh, and we would invest much more widely uh, in service scholarships. We would, as President Obama said when he was running for office, say to teachers, if you will teach, we will pay for your education. He promised a billion dollars in service scholarships at that time. If we were doing that, it would be possible for people to get good training to come into teaching in all the communities where they're needed. We would invest in programs that prepare students to succeed and stay in high-need communities. Uh, teacher residencies and grow your own programs, uh, training programs in minority serving institutions, historically black colleges, have long been one of the primary providers of African American teachers for schools, Hispanic serving institutions, tribal colleges, uh, so that we have people preparing well and staying in the communities that they want to commit their lives to. Uh, and that we would expand access to proven models that have been documented uh, of pre- and in-service training that helps all teachers learn to teach English learners and students with disabilities, not just specialists on the side. And finally, we'd focus our school improvement and teacher incentive initiatives on the factors that we know support effectiveness and teacher retention. We know that teachers come into and stay in schools where they have effective school leaders. So we would invest as well to be sure that those people are well prepared and equi equitably distributed, uh, where we have productive teaching conditions, induction and mentoring, which keeps people in the profession and allows them to become even more effective, uh, continuous high quality learning uh, communities, and uh, time for collaboration with teachers to talk about over and over and over again. All of the things are, uh, these are things that have been discussed for ESEA. Uh, have in some cases been uh, written up in legislative language uh, and that we think are part of a holistic solution. Now, where would we get the money for all this? I did use that investment word again. It would cost about $2 billion to do what I've just described. Where could that possibly come from? Three days in Afghanistan, two aircraft carriers, one multi-billionaire paying his fair share of taxes. <laughs> we, could, we could let Bill Gates pay the same tax rate as his dad did in 1975. Uh, any of those things would actually pay the cost of making the investments that we need to make to be sure that we have fully prepared, qualified, and effective teachers in all communities for all children. We could also reap the benefits of cutting teacher attrition in half uh, because preparation and mentoring are highly tied to attrition. Uh, for those who are fully prepared, they're going to leave at half the rate of those who come in without the supports that they need to stay. We pay more than $7 billion annually for teacher attrition. Uh, so simply cutting that in half would pay for all of these reforms and growing student achievement at the same time. Thank you.